Hello tubers. It's a beautiful day out here today and I'm taking advantage of the weather and I'm working on this project outside. I uh, picked up about four or five months back. Just didn't have a chance to do anything with it. When I asked the owner what was wrong with it, he said it just doesn't run. I asked how old was it and he said it's only a couple of years old and rather than bring it to a shop he just decided to buy a new one. You see the machine is pretty decent all the way around. It's not beat up, it's not scratched up and um, I did try running it. There was gas in it, it wouldn't start. Uh, carburetor, pretty dirty around the carburetor. The machine was kept fairly clean. Uh, the oil, I don't know if you can see this over here. The oil is pretty dirty but not as bad as some of the machines I've worked on. And all in all the machine works fairly well. I took this carburetor apart and inside we had the sediment. Let's see if I can clear a shot over here. You see now that it did dry out in there. I um, took this apart and let's see, I can't get a closer shot on that, but there is sediment on the bottom. All around this carburetor looks like it's non adjustable. But I will be taking out the seat, which is under this pin over here. As soon as I can put this camera down. I'll have this mounted so it won't be shaking so much. And I'll show you the uh, seat in there. Outside of this is no worse than anything else I've seen. I'm suspecting that the problem that this machine might have had was right here. I don't know if you can see this right by my thumb. That, that hole right there. I'm going to be cleaning this out, cleaning out the pin, cleaning this off, putting it back together, put some fresh gas into it and see if it fires up. And if that's not it, well, it does have compression. I pulled the plug out, uh, didn't use a compression tester, but just with my thumb I could tell there was pressure. And the plug looked like it was burning good. And now everything's pointing to this carburetor being the main culprit here. Be back in a bit. Well, I'm back and I'm working on this carburetor inside just to make sure I don't lose any of these pieces. And I'm just going to clean this, even though the outside has nothing to do with it running. You want to keep it clean. When you put it back together, you don't want any of this debris to fall into the carburetor that you just cleaned out. It only takes a couple of seconds. See if you can use a toothbrush, I use a paintbrush, whatever happens to work. In this case, the toothbrush is getting into where I have to go. You can see in here. Normally I blow these out before I take them apart. That's when I got a little bit ahead of myself. As I mentioned earlier, you can see on this carburetor, it's a newer model. It doesn't have the uh, gas adjustments. And the gas that I'm using is gas that I generally pull out of the machines that have been sitting a while. And I will be using carb cleaner. And when you use carb cleaner, you do want to take this ring off before you put it, spray it with the carb cleaner. I've seen these rings expand where you couldn't use them. That one's in pretty decent shape. I'll be using the same one again. Unless I do find a crack on it in further inspection. be quite a bit of build up around the ring. Hold this to the light here. Now this gasket over here I will be replacing for today to see if it's going to start though. I'll be using it. Okay. Check ball. There is a check ball right here. I don't know if you can see that. Take a little better look at this bar here. Yeah. Well, I have my glasses on for eye safety, and normally I would wear gloves. Let's see where we're going over here now.
pull out this pin that holds the float and this hmm, this is a little stiff coming out normally they're not this stiff coming out if you can see that pin coming out there let's take a close look at that here's your float there's your needle valve Inside of here we have the seat. A couple of ways you could get this seat out. And I don't have a kit right now. And again, the purpose of this clean out today is just to see if this machine is going to run. And if the um, Run and if the uh, self propel works on it, I hate to put carb cleaner in there because these seats also blow, blow it up. Oh, there you go, cut it out. Oh, you know what? I might have to wait for the kit to come in after all. Okay, I need a magnifying glass for this. I'll be back in a second and I'm going to try, if I didn't destroy that seat, I'm going to try to uh, blow it out with compressed air. Be back in a minute. I don't know if you're going to be able to uh, see it in this camera. It's on the tip of my finger there. You can see how small that hole is, so any debris at all will cause a clog. Now, if I get this to start, this will begin in the new uh, seat. Even though this needle valve looks good, I looked under the mag uh, magnifying glass, I put a new needle valve in there. And um, I have these coming, if they come in on time, I'll put a new ring on it. But for sure, it's going to get a new gasket. Okay, I had to get the plastic nozzle and we'll start spraying to all these holes, making sure there's. I feel it spraying into the palm of my hand from that spray. I'm just going to pour it out over here. Okay. All right, everything on this end looks good. Just to make sure, there's my little wire oh, here. Yep, no problem here, no problem here. Goes right through. You see it come up. Even in here, if you're not in here, I don't know how long the gas was sitting in this, so you want to clean out everything you can. Don't take anything for granted. Just want to get this away from the camera. Everything on this side is clean. Now we'll get to the main main jet. And over here, with this camera, I, I can't pick it up, but you, you can see it's why there's two holes on the bottom, and the wire is going right through it with no problem. Okay, this is cleaned out. When you have a surging problem with these motors, 
a lot of times this is all will be right down here too and you can see see there's still debris on the bottom of this so I'm going to clean this up a little bit more daylight coming through. Let's give it one more shot here. Now this wire happens to be a little thin for this. You can use different sizes of copper wire. You want to use copper something soft. You don't want to enlarge these holes. Okay. Now for the last thing to clean out is this carburetor bowl. If it was really bad, I would hit it with a little um, steel wool. Well, it's coming off easy enough with this this gas and um, carburetor cleaner solution now because it's all mixed together from my spraying. And again, the outside is. So nothing would fall in when we put it back together. And appearance wise, it looks a little better. I don't need this anymore. Okay, and this is about as clean as it's going to get. All right, I'm going to put it back together. When putting the seat back in, it's important on how it goes back in. There is two different sides to it. And right now, the marking on this is makes it easy to tell how this is going back in. The question is getting it in. I'm just using this to put it straight down and I use the back of a drill bit if need be to seize it properly which I might not have to do you can't see it from the camera but it is see it flat in there with the light right on it I can see it's flat down and like I said, normally I would use the back of a drill bit or even a Phillips screwdriver. You don't want to enlarge that hole though. So you want to be careful with this. Let's make sure it's down. And now, put the needle valve back in. These newer carbs with the plastic floats, they're a lot easier to put back together. You don't have the spring to contend with. You just the float just slides in. And it hangs there. The older models had a spring. like my help is on the way and we'll just simply slide this in okay and we're back together